Okay, welcome back. Um, we're now gonna talk a little bit more about designing links. So just to get into some examples and really how we go about the process of designing unique specific natural business relationships. So of course, the first thing is if you focus on the mantra, unique specific natural business relationship, that will drive for you the proper unit of work. And that's really what we're after is looking for that proper natural correlation of business keys. But it's really a two-step process. So the first one is to combine naturally correlated concepts. And then the second part being to adjust in order to avoid sparsity or redundancy. So let's go look at an example. Here in the sales example, right, we've already determined in this picture that store being assigned to region, which is happening over here, is really separate from the event of a sale. Also, likewise, if you look to the bottom over there, um, the vendor being assigned to product, that's separate. That's happened really nothing to do with the sale. But now if you look at the sale, you're saying, yep, the sale actually has a lot of things going on. It has a product, a store, a customer, and an employee. Let's take a look at the whiteboard. Okay, so on the onset, we can say that it definitely is true that a sale has a product. It's definitely true to say that a sale has a store, and a sale has a customer, and a sale has an employee that's working with the sale. So these are all factual, and they're all relationships that could be defined. Now, the way we've done this here, this is sometimes referred to as a atomic link, a foreign key link, a two-way link, just links that are not really taken into consideration the broader how everything came together um, in one view. So we might see a different answer if we start to think about what becomes naturally correlated when a sale occurs. So let's go back to the slides for a minute and take a look at that. Okay, so we determined that maybe having all separate links doesn't make sense. So maybe we want to look at how do things naturally come together? Well, as it turns out, a sale actually associates product and store and customer and employee all at the same time, really. I mean, if you think about it, I walk into a store, I purchase a set of products, I get checked out by a clerk who works there, an employee, and of course, physically in a store. So these, these things all come together at the same time. But remember, the second part of our analysis is to adjust for sparsity, because we wanna to try to avoid sparsity, null records, and also redundancy. And in this case, what's gonna happen is, for every time we have a new product on the sale, we're gonna repeat all that other information, the header level information. So we really want to consider a different answer. Why don't we go back to the board and take a look at that? Okay, so the problem we had was that when we start to look at records here, if I have sale 101 um, store, the golden store, and of course the customer, let's say it's Hans, HH, and employee, employee 107, and I buy a bag of chips. Okay, so chips. Every time I buy another product, maybe it's a, a water or a banana, I'm gonna each time repeat this same information over and over again. This redundancy is really gonna continue on. You can imagine 50 or 100 different records. So to avoid that, we wanna separate these out. So what is the thing that's causing the redundancy? Well, it's the relationship with product. So we separate out product. The other ones are really not causing any redundancy, so we can leave those the same as they were. So now a corrected model, adjusted for sparsity and redundancy, looks like this. And hopefully this makes sense to you. This is something you can follow. There's a common pattern around events that tend to have some kind of a header and maybe some kind of a line level. Okay, let's go back to the slides. Okay, so as we mentioned, this is a common theme that repeats. And like I also said, there's a header and a line level. In this case, we also needed to describe that line level so we have a line item hub, because that hub is there to be able to explain in more detail information about the product on the sale. Maybe I bought three bottles of water or three bananas or they got a discount Whatever the reason is, that's how we would do it. So that's a quick view on how we model links, taking into consideration unit of work, and also the sparsity and redundancy issue. We'll see you in the next lesson.